Yesterday, the What WG announced policy changes that could have a dramatic effect on the way web standards are made. Hey guys, Chris Love, owner of Love to Dev here, and today I want to talk to you about an announcement made yesterday by the What WG. Now, most of you may be saying, the what WG, the what? And I'll be quite honest, most of you have probably never heard of the what WG. I guarantee most developers have never even heard of it or thought what the heck it is. I bet most developers, especially web developers, don't even know what the W3C is. Well, today I'm gonna to tell you not only what these two groups are, but what were the major announcements made by the Watt WG yesterday that could have positive or possibly negative ripple effects on the way web standards are crafted. Now, back in 2004, Apple, Mozilla, and uh, Opera, three big major browser vendors at the time, got together and decided we need to do something to counterbalance the W3C. Well, as I've read the history a little bit, they were kind of miffed that they had gotten a proposal turned down to effectively kind of guide HTML in a different direction. Honestly, the direction that we've headed in long-term. See, back then, the W3C, which is a standards body that we tend to rely on for what we call web standards. These are the standards around things like HTML and other kind of platform APIs that we hook into all the time to make these great web experiences that we have. Well, you see, back then, these browser vendors were kind of like, hey, let's, let's don't worry about making this part of, the, uh, of a standard XML or DTD, DTD kind of spec. And honestly, I agree with them because I hate XML. And they said, and so they kind of, if I understand it correctly, they kind of made a proposal to make HTML something a little different uh, than strict XML, which I think is a good thing. And if you're not familiar with that, what I'm talking about, basically the reason why we have things like attributes inside of HTML tags and stuff like that is because of its kind of XML skeleton or, or, or roots, if you will. And so there was a lot of debate on how the web should go. And of course, back then, Internet Explorer was the big browser at the time. In fact, we were at IE6 days, like the heart of IE6 days. And we all know that that is awful. Anyway, back then it wasn't awful. It was actually the standard, basically. Uh, Netscape had died away, but it had become what we now know as Firefox because of the Mozilla organization. And, uh, and Apple had Safari, and Apple's Mac OS was probably about seven to 10% of the market share at the time. And then there was Opera, which many web developers I talked to have never heard of Opera, but this is a browser that still to this day has over 300 million active users. Now, for the most part, Opera has been on featured phones and you probably used Opera and did not realize it back in the day when you had that Nokia flip phone and it had that web browser that took forever because the network connectivity was so horrible that was an Opera browser. Those browsers are still used a lot, especially in developing countries. Um, but anyway, long story short, what they did was they went off and formed this other group called the What WG. Now, What WG, I don't know what the heck that really comes from. I'm pretty sure the WG stands for Working Group. And basically what they were trying to do is create a living standard for the web. Now, living standard means that it's it never kind of sits still. It's just constantly growing and it's constantly moving. Well, back then they invited a couple of editors to the group to kind of oversee the whole thing. One being Ian Hickson, who is still there. Today, he actually works for the Google Chrome team. Back then, I'm not totally sure who he worked for, but that's beside the point. They also invited Chris Wilson, who at the time worked for the Internet Explorer team. And honestly, today, or actually today, he works for the Google Chrome team. So anyway, but at the time, Chris politely declined because the Watt WG had too 
very key missing features that I think Microsoft felt was needed. And this is these are features that W3C has built in and in, in, you know innately, I guess you could say. And that is intellectual property rights, uh, uh, governments, uh, so to speak, or, or protection, if you will, and kind of a formal standardization process or oversee or code of conduct kind of thing. You see, the, w, the, the Watt WG was kind of thrown together as a place where I, I feel, I've always felt like people could just kind of hash out their ideas and say, this is the spec, right? And I think some developers actually look at that and go, hey, this is the spec. This is what I got to deal with, right? And I think part of that is because Ian works for the Chrome team. Now, no offense to Ian. I don't know Ian. And, but the lack of oversight to the, w, the Watt WG has been kind of a sticking point. Now, uh, I never really read through Watt WG documentation because it just kind of felt kind of creepy for me to go over there when I knew that the real web standards were on W3C. But as I got into the service worker thing, especially around the Fetch API, I know I had to spend a ton of time over there because that's where the real documentation seemed to be was about the Fetch API was on the Watt WG. Now, if you're not familiar with these specs and standardization processes, these are very, very crucial to building websites that anybody can use. And that's because these are the specifications that browsers take and then build in support so you and I can actually write code and trust that it's going to work in all of the browsers. Now, if they don't follow the specification, then we can call them out in public and say, shame on you. And we can also kind of grade how well do they support a certain standard, right? But if there's no real governance over the process and the standard, so to speak, is constantly moving, that's bad for you. And it's also bad for these browser vendors because how, how to know if they actually really support what the standard is because the standard that they shipped six weeks ago, if you're talking about Chrome, may have changed because it's a living standard and somebody decided to kind of change it overnight one night. And we may have to wait another, you know, two or three rev cycles of Chrome just to get support for that. And it, because it has to follow through Chrome Canary and all nightly and all that kind of stuff, just to verify that it doesn't break things. And the number one thing that I think most of the browsers constantly agree on is the term, don't break the internet. And none of us want to break the internet. But by, by supporting things that are non-standard, the internet can easily get broken because what happens is developers will write towards a sort of spec in time and then that spec goes through migrations. Meanwhile, the code that we wrote a year or two ago still proliferates and it suddenly breaks and that means the web is suddenly broken. Now there's a lot of standards that eventually get deprecated. For example, right now we're in the last few years of app cache support. And I also think we're in the last few years of XML HTTP request support, which is what a lot of websites use for Ajax. So these are just examples of why specifications and standards are super important to all of us. Now, yesterday, the Watt WG announced that they're adding intellectual property rights protection to their guidance. And they're also adding more structured governance so that there is kind of a, a proposal specification that actually has to go through kind of a standardization process. And then it sort of, I guess it's gonna become like a recommended standard. Now, if you're not familiar with how the W3C works, that's effectively how the W3C works. First, someone says, hey, I got this great idea. And the W3C kind of says, hey, it goes to this committee over here. And then the committee kind of talks about it. It's sort of like Congress, if you think about it. And that's the problem. The W3C works like Congress. It goes really slow. And that's one of the problems that they have with this kind of organization is it moves really slow. So the Watt WG moves really fast. And, but the problem is they don't have any of that governance around it. So it's kind of haphazardly put together in theory, right? So now that what WG is going to have some sort of approval process in place that we can kind of look at and say, this is the flow that a specification or a proposal has to go through. Now, part of being accepted as an actual recommended standard is having browsers that actually implement the specification. And usually the rule of thumb is once 
two major browsers implement sp support for a certain specification, then that is a strong candidate for formal recommendation. And so this is kind of good. Now, the problem that you may be thinking is, okay, now we got W3C, we got WattWG, and they both kind of have similar governances over them. They both have intellectual property rights protection for the browser vendors. And also what that comes down to is each one of these browser vendors have engineers on their teams and they come up with cool ideas. And then they, what they do is they get patents on those ideas. So who's to say that Microsoft or Apple or Google or Mozilla doesn't go out and sue Microsoft, Apple, Google, Mozilla for infringing on their property rights because they've got patents. Well, the way I interpret all this stuff, and this goes along with having conversations with people on these teams about the patent rights, is basically these guys are getting patents and they own the rights to those patents. And honestly, it's one of those things where I've got a patent, cool, I'm the guy who came up with it, and I'm always going to be able to say I'm the guy who came up with it. But I'm not really seeking any royalties or financial um, compensation for coming up with these ideas. I'm just taking the satisfaction that I've made the web an awesomer place. And that's, that's effectively what's going on here. When they come up with these ideas, they want to get the credit for it, but they don't necessarily want to get the money for it, if that makes any sense. They've got other ways to monetize, if you will. Um, so the thing is, in the end, everybody wins because the web gets to be a better and better place. And that's what I really hope the WattWG going through these steps does. It makes the web a better place. Now, honestly, we're going to have two competing bodies to produce standards. Now, the reality is if you go through and read a, w a W3C specification and a WattWG specification, they're almost identical. There's been accusations of copy and paste, convenience, and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't care. Not my problem to worry about. But they're very close to each other. Now, there may be some slight differences of opinion of how things actually gestate, so to speak, and come out, or how they might be interpreted, so to speak. But in general, they're pretty close and spot on to each other. And that's a good thing. Now, ultimately, I think what this really means for us is that the web's going to get specifications probably at a faster pace. Now that could be dangerous because now that's going to spread engineers out on these browser teams even further. It could be a good thing for some of us because maybe the browsers will hire us to implement some of those specifications and expand their teams. I think this comes down partially to how well we as developers start leveraging some of these specifications. And there's so many fantastic specifications that are going to support every single time a browser uh, revs itself. And it's hard to almost, almost really keep up with all this stuff. I know Microsoft Edge and Chrome both maintain pages where you can go and see what specifications are currently supported and what's under development, what's being under consideration, what's not even being considered just yet. And honestly, you, those are usually like brand new ideas that just popped up on the radar. And here's the cool thing. Even with W3C, the Dewatt WG, you can participate in both groups. I think it's a little harder with the W3C. The WattWG is much more accessible to the average person. In fact, you can go to their participation page and you can sign up right now. There's to be an official participant after these rules go into effect sometime in mid-January. You will need to have signed like a document that basically says you're gonna, you're gonna abide by the rules, so to speak. I don't think that's a lot to ask. And to be fair, a lot of the discussions that go on the W3C are actually out in the open on their GitHub repo. In fact, I've been watching the service worker repo a lot over the last year and even chimed in a couple of times. So maybe I am a participant. I don't know. But I can tell you what I am going to do. I am going to go through the process. I'm going to sign that document just so I can say I'm there. I can at least see what's going on. And who knows, maybe I can even participate because I got some ideas. I'd like to see some things. And the reality is I actually try to implement some of the, the support, the, the implementations based on these specs, and I can probably give them some feedback that they actually need. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Maybe you've never heard of the WattWG or the W3C for that matter. And I encourage you, if you haven't, go look them up and see what you think. If you've never read a specification for the web, I encourage you to go find something that you're interested in 
and sit down one night and just try to read the specification. Warning, you may fall asleep. Now, the WG and W3C are not the only standards bodies that we as web developers rely on. There's the IETF, there's ECMA, there's ISO, there's the Unicode com com uh, Consortium, and a few other bodies that also make standards that we rely on. And these bodies are very important, and they've got to have rules, and they've got to have rules that the browser vendors, the people who are going to implement these specifications, agree upon. Because if there's no common agreement with, amongst them, they're probably not going to essentially honor the specs coming out of those bodies. So if you got questions, leave those in the comments below, share it with your friends, and I'd love to hear what you have to say about the WG, adding intellectual property rights coverage and new governance standards.